<laughs> we can't talk to you, Miss Sally. Yes, you can. But no. Okay. Oh, just right. Be casual. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Moving on past that. Section 8.4. By the way, tomorrow in lieu of checking homework, we're going to have a quiz on sections 1 through 4. What? But you still have to do your homework so you can do the quiz. And you have to have it for your binder at the end of the quarter. Oh, it's tomorrow. Ew. We have to write that. Down. No, you don't have to write this. Okay, every right triangle has one right angle and two acute angles, correct? Yeah. Those two Sometimes. acute angles just have to add up to 90. One can be 89 and one can be 1. One could be 46 and one could be 44. They could be whatever, as long as they add up to 90. Is that even on one side? Yes. But there are two types of special right triangles. Mm -hmm. You need to write this down. You don't have to write two types. Just You have a 45, 45, 90. And you have a 30, 60, 90. And there's a reason that they're called special right triangles. And that reason is soon to come. This is lesson eight four. You're a little behind here, Mr. Chris. Oh, What's one like a forty fifty ninety? That's not special. Oh, that's special enough. Okay. Sorry, okay. First thing is this: a forty five forty five ninety is an isosceles right triangle. How do we know it's an isosceles? Very good, Scott. Because if two angles are equal, then two sides are also equal. So yes, it is an isosceles right triangle. The two legs equal each other, and there's a consistent relationship between the legs and the hypotenuse. So the reason it's special is since we know what this relationship always is, we don't have to do calculations. Okay? We don't have to do these long, drawn-out things. Also, because they're special, we only need to know one side to be able to find the other two. Whereas before, with the Pythagorean theorem, we had to know two out of the three sides. Wait, don't you, what if you know the hypotenuse? I'm going to tell you in a second. Okay. We're coming. Just slow your roll. Okay, draw this picture. This is a, now I only have one 45 degree angle labeled, but the other angle is labeled as 90, so we know it has to be a 45, 45, 90. The hypotenuse is in the same location it's always been, and the other two sides are called legs, and there's no distinction between them because they have the same value. What's it called, the hypotenuse? I have no clue. Now, the relationship that exists and always will exist is this. The measure of the hypotenuse in a 45, 45, 90 is equal to a leg times the square root of 2. Now, let's prove that. Okay? I'm going to let H represent hypotenuse, and I'm going to let L represent leg. Since I know this is a right triangle, then I know the Pythagorean theorem will work, correct? Correct. So the hypotenuse squared 
will equal a leg squared plus the other leg squared. No, stop. Wait. Can you add L squared plus L squared? You get 2L squared. And if I'm looking for the hypotenuse and it's being squared, what do I do? I take the square root of both sides. Well, under that radical, is there a pair of something that can be removed? There's a pair of L's. So no matter what value the hypotenuse or the leg has, it's always going to have this relationship. Now watch. Sometimes you will be given the length of a leg. And so it's very simple. You simply multiply it times the square root of 2. But what if you're given the hypotenuse and you're looking for the leg? Well, instead of multiplying, you divide. Okay? And, and a good way to help you remember this also is the leg is always smaller than the hypotenuse, right? So you know you either have to multiply the leg times something or divide it by something. Well, if you multiply it, it's going to make a bigger number, correct? Yeah. Right. Okay, so you've got to multiply. The hypotenuse is the bigger number. You don't want to multiply times anything because you're going to get something even bigger. So you have to divide. All right, so let's look at some examples. First, you need to establish what type of triangle this is. Is it special? We need to write down all these examples. Yes. It's very special. Yeah, it's 45, 45. It's a 45, 45, 90. Then you need to identify what you're looking for. Is X the hypotenuse or a leg? It's the hypotenuse. Okay. So do I take 12 and multiply? By the square root of 2? Or divide? Right. I'm looking for the hypotenuse. I need a bigger number than 12. Multiply. So that's your answer? That's your answer. You don't have to. That's the most important thing I've ever seen. I don't get it at all. I know the square root of 2. From this relationship? Okay. Now draw this triangle. We know we have a 90, we know we have a 45, so we know the other one also has to be 45 degrees. This time, am I looking for the hypotenuse or the leg? The leg. This time, I'm looking for the leg. This time, you divide. This time, I divide by the square root of 2, because I need to get a smaller number. So it's L equals... So it be 4 squared to 8. Four exactly. Four. Now we've got to go back to working with radicals. You can't give me this as a final answer. Manipulating radicals to remove it from the denominator, I'm going to multiply by the square root of 2 over the square root of 2, which gives me 8 square roots of 2 over 2, and if the whole numbers can reduce, then you reduce them. <coughs> and they can. So x is equal to 4 square roots of 2. So can we just say we can just have how many multiply and have the whole numbers have to? Basically. But in case you just unless there's a radical attached. Which we'll see an example of that. I'm so in a confused. Uh, where did you get two square roots of two? I mean Square root of 2. Well, I think you're drawing uh, um, from this relationship. Yeah. Well, if then we, we get 8 times that. If I was looking for the hypotenuse, yeah, but I'm not looking for the hypotenuse. I'm looking for the leg. So let's actually work it out. If the hypotenuse is equal to the leg times the square root of 2, and the hypotenuse is 8, and I don't know the leg, 